Let's start with a small chess problem. Don't worry, it's an easy puzzle, a simple made in one. White to move. You can pause the video to figure it out or let it play and enjoy the show. There's actually two different mates in one here. First of all, notice that the rose is locking down b8, so the black king has no escape square. You can either take the b7 pawn with your grasshopper for a discovered mate with your archbishop, or take with the archbishop, which is defended by the grasshopper. Pretty simple, right? Well, as long as you know how the pieces move, which is partly what this video is for. This is a collection of the more well-known fairy pieces, and not only will I be describing them, but I'll be rating them out of 10 based on how cool they are. Let's get some basic shit out of the way. If you ever played chess as a kid and tried to think of new pieces, what's the first thing you'd think of, like the very first one? Obviously, you take a look at the queen and give it the only thing it's lacking, being able to move like a knight. This is the Amazon, and good god this thing is OP. <laughs> I'm in danger! This monster, this unholy behemoth, can checkmate the enemy king without any help. It's a seriously fearsome piece, but it's not the most creative thing on this list, so I'm gonna give it a 6 out of 10. While we're at it, let's just slap the knight move onto other pieces too, like the nook, which is a knight plus a rook, obviously, and the archbishop, which is the knight plus the bishop. They're just as uncreative as the Amazon, but they don't have that fearsome power factor, so I'm gonna give them a 5 out of 10. Here comes a slight curveball. What if you slapped a knight onto another knight? Introducing the knight rider, which jumps like a knight but can just keep going until it runs into something. Again, it's quite simple, but I really like it. It makes the knight a little more useful, but doesn't sacrifice any of its goofiness. 7 out of 10. But just wait a second, because I'm about to flip the script. Why make the pieces better when we could just make them worse? Have a look at the furs, which moves one square diagonally, the wazir, which moves one square orthogonally, and the man, which is just a king if the king was in a constitutional monarchy and it didn't matter if he died. They're not good, like they're not fun by any means, but someone was gonna create these eventually. 3 out of 10. This next one is my favorite bad piece because it's so mean. The short rook is just a rook that can only move up to four squares. There's no elegance to it, it's just like, hey, you're a manlet now. For the sheer hilarity of it, I'm giving it a four out of ten. There's two more disgusting combination pieces to cover. The Roshup moves like a rook and captures like a bishop, and the Biok? 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 Whatever you call it, it just does the opposite. These things are an affront to nature and they make me sick looking at them, so that's a 2 out of 10. Here's a nice palette cleanser. The griffin is a little more out there. It moves one square diagonally and then moves like a rook. It's a powerful piece and it does something a little different, so I'm gonna give it a 7 out of 10. I wanna give pawns a bit of love too. The barrelina pawn is the opposite of the pawn. It captures four reds and moves diagonally. If you want the best of both worlds, there's the super pawn, which does both. They're nothing crazy, but pawns shouldn't be be too powerful anyway, since their role in chess is to create cover for more mobile pieces and basically dictate the shape of the game. So these are fine alternatives. I'll give both of these a 6 out of 10. Before things really go off the deep end, I need to talk about a family of pieces. If you think knights are a little boring, there's an entire family of knight alternatives called leapers that jump over pieces like the knight does, but to different distances. Some popular ones are the camel, giraffe, zebra, and alfil. Again, someone was gonna come up with these sooner or later, so I'll just just give them all a 5 out of 10. Okay, listen up. This list has been pretty tame so far, but get ready, because I'm about to kick it up a gear. I want to make something clear so that we don't devolve into anarchy. The pieces have to be from a chess-like game with otherwise minimal changes to the chess rules. I don't want to describe an entirely new game just for one piece. Something like chess on a bigger board is fine, because it's, it's just chess, but the board is... wait for it bigger. But something like this laser chess abomination is not on the table. Got it? Got it. Speaking of big boards, here's something that can really take advantage of some extra space. The rose. It moves like a knight, but it can keep going in a kind of circular direction, and if the path is clear, it can end up where it started. A very nifty way to skip your turn if you need to. This might just be my favorite one. God, this thing is goofy, but at the same time, look at the sheer distance it can cover. No notes. 10 out of 10. And to round out the pieces from the opening puzzle, the grasshopper 
Hopper moves like a queen, but it can only move to jump over another piece. And if that piece is an enemy piece, it gets captured, kinda like checkers. There's a buffed version called the Long Leaper that can move like a queen without capturing a piece, and it still captures by jumping over pieces, but it can capture multiple in one turn if they're in a straight line. I'll give the Grasshopper a 7 out of 10 and the Long Leaper an 8 out of 10, because the one thing checkers had over chess is the sheer mania of taking four of your opponent's pieces at the same time, but not anymore. Ooh, celebrity alert. This one's pretty relevant as some YouTubers have covered it recently. You've been waiting for it, the duck. This one's a little different because both players share the same duck. At the end of every player's turn, they can reposition the duck wherever they please, and it acts as a brick wall, nothing can capture it. This is one of those simple yet elegant pieces I can really appreciate, and it's no surprise people are enjoying duck chess so much. 9 out of 10. Hopefully by the time this video comes out, this one won't be relevant. I'm talking about the missile. You can deploy the missile to anywhere on the board, killing anything on the square it lands on and adjacent squares except the king. But it can't do this if a non-pawn piece hasn't been taken yet, or if something's attacking the missile. I really like this piece because it's powerful, but it still allows for some counterplay. This one's an 8 out of 10. Okay, time for a rapid fire round. All of these pieces move like a queen, but they have some kind of unique gimmick. The withdrawer captures an adjacent piece by moving away from it. Simple enough concept, but still shakes up the game. 7 out of 10. The coordinator captures a piece that's on its rank and the king's file and vice versa. This one is wonky as fuck to calculate and get used to, but it is creative. 8 out of 10. The immobilizer can't capture, but any enemy piece adjacent to it can't move. Similarly, the gorgon can capture, and any enemy piece it attacks can't move. I like the idea of hindering enemy pieces in an unorthodox way. 9 out of 10. The imitator captures like the pieces capturing would take, so it can take a bishop by moving diagonally to it. This one can definitely cause some chaos, especially when you have different fairy pieces in play. 8 out of 10. The Capricorn captures any enemy piece it moves next to, so it could theoretically take 7 pieces at once. Simple gimmick, but god can it ruin someone's day. 8 out of 10. All these pieces are great, but there's an important question at play. Is chess even good? Watch this video to find out, and also subscribe.